This video was sponsored by Squarespace. What's going on guys? Vincent here from the creativedojo.net. Hope you're doing well out there. Today's After Effects quick tip, we're gonna be talking about auto scaling, auto resizing, responsive text within After Effects. Now, why is this important? Well, a lot of times you're gonna be doing projects and designs for either commercial projects or your own projects, and you pretty much have a fixed design kind of ready to go. Things are kind of adapted for a certain width, and you know, whether or not you use a very long piece of text or a short piece of text, or whether it's a lower thirds, titles, whatever it is, typically you want your text to be kind of dynamic and responsive so that it doesn't kind of break your design. And this is really important for like sports design and infographics and stuff like that, where, you know, you're constantly changing the data, you're constantly changing the name, the teams, whatever it is, but you have your design already kind of built in and you don't want it to kind of break the design or you have a fixed width that you're kind of working with in a certain region. And so, for example, if I go in here and I type in responsive text, as you can see, the text automatically resizes to fit my desired frame. And that way, if I have a design based on this fixed width right here, things don't break and it looks very responsive and things kind of just flow dynamically. Um, and so this will also work with longer text, like responsive text color, for example, and also works in vertical height as well. So if I type in, you know, responsive text color and I add a second line here, third line, fourth line, eventually I'm gonna break the frame right here. So I'm gonna type in fifth line, sixth line. And now whenever I go to the seventh line, you can see that it kind of rescaled a little bit and final line. So it fits my whole entire text layer that I want to kind of show and it kind of rescales everything down perfectly to kind of fit this. And if I just go back to just text, for example, you know, you get this really nice bold text and this is very versatile for a lot of reasons. And this doesn't apply to just text. You can actually use these concepts I'm about to teach and apply it to things like graphics, videos, you know, lower thirds, whatever it is. You can apply the same concepts and make things more responsive. And that seems to be the trend nowadays because people are viewing stuff on their mobile phones, on smaller laptops, on larger displays, TVs, whatever. And so you can apply this to multiple things. Now, if you don't care about expressions, you can go ahead and link down below to the video description. I'll include the expression code down below, as well as a new preset that I created with um, you know, a nice pseudo effect, which allows you to give you more control over this whole thing and kind of gives you a fancier controller preset that you can apply to your projects right away. Um, so links down below in the creativedojo.net store. But for those who kind of want to learn the technique behind this and the expression behind it, and you're kind of geeking out about expressions, this might help you do other things to make things more responsive. And, you know, preface, this is all code by the famous Dan Eberts, you know, the guy behind Motion Scripts. So this is all his stuff right here. I don't take any credit for this. Um, he's a genius. Check his stuff out. Um, but I'm going to apply it and kind of show you kind of how it works. So the whole idea is that we're gonna be using the scale property of our text. So this is just a regular text layer. There's nothing magical about it. There's no expressions applied to it. I'm gonna hit S on the keyboard to open the scale property, hit alter option, hit it on the stopwatch to enable expressions. So I know as of After Effects version 17, we now have access to the font size with expressions. So that might be a better solution depending on what you're doing. But by using scale, it's more backwards compatible for older versions of After Effects. And you can kind of apply this concept to other things like lower thirds, graphics, whatever. Um, but just note that, you know, I will probably do another video on this using the font size um, expression property um, rather than scale. But you know, both ways kind of work here. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and define my max width in my max height region. So I'm gonna type in max W and that's gonna equal, let's just say, you know, this arbitrary number. This can be kind of whatever it is, as long as it's in pixels. A quick and easy way is to kind of get this comp. So this composition's width and just times it by 0.9. So our, basically our max region for our text layer is gonna be 0.9 or 90% of our comp width. And we can do the same exact thing for the max height, this comp height times 0.9 semicolon. And so basically that's defining our region, which is 0.9 or 90% of our width, 90% of our height. This can be whatever you want. You can make it whatever you want. You can even define pixels rather than getting the comp size width and height and all that stuff. You can change the percentages. This is just arbitrary stuff right here. And so, I'm gonna get the kind of rectangular shape of this text layer by using the source rec that time. This is a new expression as of 2014. Um, so we'll type in R, just random variable, source rec at time. And we'll use the current time of this layer to get the kind of outline box of this text layer right here. 
And we'll go ahead and type a couple of variables um, we're, that we're accessing through our source record times. So source record time actually gives us data about this box right here. It can give us the top point right here. It can give us the left point right here. It can give us the width of this thing. It can also give us the height of this thing. So this is what we're kind of extracting. So the width of this rectangular text that we have right here is gonna be equals W R dot width. And the height of this box that we have of our text layer right here is going to be called H R dot height. And then here is where the magic happens. So we're going to get a scale ratio, right? So by default, things are like 100% scale, 100% scale, whatever it is. We're going to get a kind of a scale factor. And then, you know, this number will be multiplied by our scale to kind of auto scale our text to the right width, basically. And so that's going to be our scale factor equals W over H. So our width divided by our height. And if that is greater than our max W divided by max height, then we're gonna, our scale factor is gonna equal our max W divided by W. And if not, it's gonna be S equals max H divided by H right here, semicolon. And then once we get our scale factor, we're gonna type in 100, 100 right here. And we'll type in asterisk times our scale factor. So whoa, 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 what's all, what's, what's going on here? So basically we're defining our region that we want our text to kind of stay within. So in this case, it's 90% of our width comp and 90% of our composition height. So that's the first two lines. Then we're getting the rectangular outline of our text layer, which is gonna be R equals source work at time, current time. And then once we have that, we're gonna get the width of that box, the height of that box, and now we're gonna calculate a ratio. So if our width to height ratio of our box is greater than the ratio of the width and height of our max region, then our scale factor is gonna equal it max W divided by W. And if not, if it's less than, then, we're gonna, then our ratio is gonna be max H divided by H. And that's just kind of like a scale factor multiplier. And we're gonna apply that to our you know, default scale at 100%. So now you're gonna notice that whenever I type in our responsive text, I'm gonna type in some other text. As you can see, things scale appropriately in width and height wise, but things kind of start to move. So as you can see, you know, if I type in hello, you know, all of a sudden our text disappears because it's somewhere off the screen. But if I type in more stuff, you can see that's kind of starting to kind of scale down appropriately. So the position is kind of shifting, the anchor point is kind of shifting because the scale is shifting. And the reason is because things are moving because things are scaling based on the anchor point. So right now our anchor point's right here. And whenever we scale things down, it's kind of based on our anchor point. And we can move our anchor point around and things would be completely different. So if I type in something else, again, it disappears because anchor point's right here, the scale is bigger. And so the position is a little bit offset. So basically we need to find a way to kind of always keep our anchor point still and adjust the position accordingly based on the scale. And so what we can do is we can go ahead and make sure that our anchor point is always centered. So for that, we can go into our transform, go to our anchor point and, you know, alt click on the stopwatch, create a new expression here. And for this, we're gonna go ahead and do the same exact thing. We're gonna type in source size. And that is going to equal this layer source rect at time. Again, same thing as before. We're getting the kind of outline of our text box right here. And which have been false. This is not going to include the extents, which is applicable for paragraph text layers or shape layers. You can read more about it. Um, but same thing, source rect at time. And then we're going to go ahead and type in T equals source size dot top. So same as before, we're going and grabbing all these little data from our source rect at time, you know, equals left, our capital W equals the width of this thing, dot width, H is gonna be the height, source size, dot height. And finally, so once we have all this data, we're gonna go ahead and tell After Effects to always center our anchor point. So that's gonna equal L plus W divided by two for the X position and for the Y position is always gonna be the top point plus 
half the height. And this doesn't really make sense when you're watching it, but if you go ahead and pause and just try to understand, you know, this math right here, it kind of makes sense that it's going to center the anchor point to the center of the region right here. And so let's think about this. So the X position is going to be the leftmost point in the X position. And then we're going to go ahead and add half the width. So it's going to move it right here. And then for the Y position, it's going to be the top point right here. And it's going to add half the height, which is going to move it down here. So the height's going to move it down here and the width's going to move it over here. And so the anchor point's always going to be the center of the text box layer that we have. Cool. So now that the anchor point's always at the center of our text layer, but now the text is always offset. So now we have to kind of reposition our text back into the center. So for that, we have another expression here. Go ahead and hit P on the keyboard. Hit alter option on for the position. And this one's a lot simpler. Capital H equals this comp dot height. W equals this comp dot width. And so we're going to tell the position to always be half our width and half our height. So W divided by two, comma, H divided by two. So this is going to tell our position to always be half of our comp width and half of our comp height. And so the position is always going to be right dab in the middle. And because our anchor point's also in the middle, things are going to be nicely centered. And so now things will scale properly and also reposition the position and the anchor point to always keep things centered. So if I type in, hello, this is text. It's always centered. The anchor point's always in the middle and things scale appropriately that way. And as you can see, the base limitation is that things kind of have to be centered, right? So this whole expression relies and repositions text to the center because a lot of times you're creating text in the center. Now, if you did want to create, let's say, responsive text in this top left hand corner or this, you know, bottom right hand corner for a lower thirds, for example, then most likely the expression for the scale is going to be the exact same. But you kind of have to offset your anchor point and your position. So, you know, you would want, maybe want to you know, position your anchor point all the way to the right of your text layer, for example, and then reposition that text to the bottom right. Um, it's pretty simple if you just use some basic math based on the source work at time, just by you, you play around with the halves and, you know, times two or, you know, minus one half. Um, play around with the math right here for the source work at time. You can kind of position the anchor point to the right of text layers and position the text layer itself somewhere else, wherever you want. You can define the region that way. And remember, if you think that this region is too big, you want a smaller region, you can always go into the scale property and either type your own, you know, width in pixels or whatever, or you can type, you know, a smaller percentage, like 0.5 of the width. And that's only going to make the text, you know, 50% of the comp width right here. So pretty simple stuff. You just can apply it to your own projects. And if you guys want, download my free preset to kind of do this automatically with more controls apply it to your text layers and make things dynamic. And we'll probably talk about how to do this with font size in the future. Before I go, I want to give a quick thanks to our sponsors over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the only platform to create an amazing website, whether it's for your store, online business, or portfolio. They have amazing things to choose from, fully customizable so you can make it the way you want it to look like without having any coding knowledge required. They have awesome 25 hour support, and best of all, if you use the promo code DOJO at checkout, you can actually save 10% off your order and support the DOJO. So check it out over at squarespace.com slash DOJO. Squarespace, the number one place to create an amazing website. So that's pretty much it, guys. This is a kind of a crash course on how to create some responsive text using the scale parameter. Thanks to Dan Eberts. Mad props to him and all credits go to him. If you guys like videos like this, give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe for more videos like this and leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. It helps push our videos out to other people on YouTube and helps us kind of get the videos out to more people. And I would really appreciate that. So my name is Vincent Wynn from The Creative Dojo. I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.